Hello and welcome to Your Manchester. Here's what's coming up. We'll be speaking to 70-year-old Frank Rothwell, who has completed his 3,000-mile solo challenge across the Atlantic, and we'll also hear who's first on your list to see once restrictions start to ease. I'm Jessica Hay, and this is Manchester TV, your brand new local TV channel for across Greater Manchester. Reporting from the places you know, I'll be bringing you news, sports, entertainment, and reflecting your opinions. For the latest news across the county, you can follow us on social media media. We would love to hear your stories too, so please do get in touch. Just search for Manchester TV. A 70-year-old grandfather from Oldham has rowed 3,000 miles across the Atlantic Ocean solo to raise money for Alzheimer's Research UK. Frank Rothwell is the oldest person to row the Atlantic unassisted and I spoke with him to hear all about it. Following the launch of the Greater Manchester Technology Fund, 638 disadvantaged young learners from across Greater Manchester have received the digital kit needed to continue their learning at home. The Mayor of Greater Manchester, Andy Burnham, launched Phase 2 in January. Next up, Ansbury Council is investing £3.5 million in a new fit-for-purpose fuel-efficient fleet of 19 waste collection vehicles to boost efficiency and improve the service provided to residents. The new vehicles will replace the existing fleet. And finally, the community of Staley Bridge in Greater Manchester is the focus of a new project to reduce flooding in the western fringe of the Pennines using natural methods. Funded by the Environment Agency, the trial will help test how nature-based solutions can help to reduce the risk of flooding. As the number of people receiving the vaccine dose reaches over 12 million, does this mean we are almost out the other side? I'll be hearing your thoughts on who is the first person you want to see once restriction ease, as research suggests the pandemic has brought people closer to their family and friends. Coming up after the break on Your Manchester, We'll be speaking to Dogs Trust Manchester, who hope to find dogs at their centre loving new families this Valentine's Day. And we'll also be finding out exactly what the secret is to a happy relationship. I'm Jessica Hay and this is Manchester TV, your brand new local TV channel for across Greater Manchester. Reporting from the places you know, I'll be bringing you news, sport, entertainment and reflecting your opinions. For the latest news across the county, you can follow us on social media. We would love to hear your stories too, so please do get in touch. Just search for Manchester TV. Welcome back to Your Manchester. Thanks for joining us. As Valentine's Day approaches, staff at Dogs Trust Manchester are hoping that the day will bring with it loving new owners for dogs, eagerly awaiting a new family at their rehoming centre. I spoke with Carol Margerson from the charity, who says there's nothing better than receiving some puppy love. Welcome back to Your Manchester. Thanks for joining us. As Valentine's Day approaches, staff at Dogs Trust Manchester are hoping that the day will bring with it loving new owners for dogs, eagerly awaiting a new family at their rehoming centre. I spoke with Carol Margerson from the charity, who says there's nothing better than receiving some puppy love. For the humans that aren't getting the cards, we might look to the dogs <laughs> for a little bit of extra loving on that day. 
As Valentine's Day approaches, for us humans, it's a time to shower our loved ones with love and affection. At Dogs Trust Manchester, Carol says that for their furry friends, it's a day like any other. Valentine's is about love and I think the one thing that we do on a daily basis is is give all our dogs um, lots of love. So it's not particularly a special day, although, um, you know, whether the humans amongst us will get a lot of cards and flowers, I, I, I don't know, but the dogs will um, will just be treated exactly the same. To be fair, they'll be showered with um, everyday love as much as Valentine's love. To get into the Valentine's spirit and to encourage a bit of doggy romance, the charity are shining a light on the dogs that are looking for their forever home. On site today with us, we've got 54 um, and we've on our website are the ones that we've got currently available for rehoming. Um, we do have um, a, a brother and sis, two brother and sister duos that would love um, to, to get their home um, full stop, but certainly um, on this Valentine's weekend, um, there are two huskies uh, and two little staffies that have come into us. They give unconditional love, um, no matter how they're feeling, we, they will still love us. Um, and I think especially during these times where people are potentially suffering um, with lockdown and we're not seeing friends, we're not seeing family. I know there is um, obviously quite a lot of mental health issues at the minute. I don't think there is anything better than um, having that big cuddle from from your dog they know how we're feeling they know when to pick us up they know when to nudge us with that nose like many other charities the pandemic has brought on many challenges carol says that they have done the best they can to adapt for the center in manchester i think the biggest thing is how we've had to change our working practices because obviously on a prior to this we were open so people could come down to the center at any point and have a look round and see the dogs ask any questions um whereas now we haven't had any public within the center since last march since the very first lockdown whilst the rehoming center has been closed to the public for almost a year the charity are wherever possible still matching the dogs in their care with their forever homes this coming valentine's day carol has one last word of advice as we all know chocolate is and can be exceptionally poisonous. So just be careful um, and make it a happy Valentine's. Residents are being asked to come up with imaginative names for some of Manchester's new electric bin lorries. The council has invested in 27 new electric collection vehicles, replacing almost half of its existing fleet. The winning names will be emblazoned on the bin lorries. Next up, and Bury residents will soon have a greater incentive to take up tennis. National lockdown restrictions mean that public tennis courts across the borough are currently closed, but Bury Council is using this time to upgrade the courts with new fencing, new playing surfaces and a smart access gate. And finally, Manchester's world-famous Chinese New Year Festival will be a little different this year due to ongoing Covid event restrictions. The usual colourful dragon parade and Chinatown street events won't be taking place. However, Manchester will be painted red with its famous red lanterns. The majority of Britons in a romantic relationship plan to celebrate St Valentine's Day in some form, a study has confirmed. The lockdown restrictions are prompting many to make the most of the day of love. So what's the secret to a successful and long-lasting relationship? Well, I'm here to find out for us all. I look at your latest national headlines now. First, and Wales has become the first part of the UK to reach its February vaccination target. The Welsh Government's aim was in line with England's and was to vaccinate the top four priority groups by mid-Feb. First Minister Mark Drakeford thanked everyone who'd been working around the clock to reach this point. Next, and social distancing restrictions plus mask wearing could remain in place until at least the autumn, that's according to plans being considered by ministers. Prime Minister Boris Johnson is to set out a roadmap out of lockdown on the 22nd of February.
And finally, one of Britain's oldest stone circles has been found in Wales and could be the original building blocks of Stonehenge. Archaeologists uncover the remains in Pembrokeshire and believe the stones could have been dismantled and rebuilt 150 miles away on Salisbury Plain in Wiltshire. Thanks for watching, we'll be back later. Bye for now. Welcome along to another Met Office 10 day trend with an awful lot going on. You've probably noticed it's a little cold outside and that cold weather will continue for the next couple of days. There are still Met Office warnings in place for snow and ice. I'm not going to go through the details here. They're available on the Met Office app and on the website. The big question, when will it turn milder? Well, now there is quite a strong signal that it will turn milder next week. Milder, but also quite a bit wetter. And there are still some big complications about how we get there. The transition is going to take place through this weekend.